<laughs> you know, this order of the service is very helpful if I would only read it. I was jumping up. Bill had to go, not now, Nancy. <laughs> All right, well, good morning. And I can personally say how much I miss the choir, but I am very thankful for everything that happens every Sunday in August. It's something new and fun and different, and I appreciate all of you for coming. Love handbells. All right, so let me uh, make sure that you know that next Sunday there is this lovely girl coming, a flautus. I asked Cindy Fuller, it's not flutus, it's flautus. And she is lovely and wonderful and talented. And we are privileged to have her come and play in the service next week. And I hope you will come and even bring friends, friends that love music. If your neighbors love music, bring them. They will be so blessed. So I appreciate the flowers. We have just got the best florist. And thank you to... Patty Smith, Sue Dowtry, and Joyce Mukuno, in memory of family and friends, always, don't we always think of them every day? I know I do. And so I wanted to share a story. Uh, it's an old story. I love stories. And when I first started really reading the Gospels, I realized that was the primary teaching tool of Jesus. He knew if he told a story, he had them. And so I want to tell a family story. I asked my grandchildren if they remembered this. They said no, but my grandchildren are 23 and almost 20 now, and this happened when they were about three and five, so they are to be forgiven. But we were up in El Dorado Hills at my oldest son's house, and I heard this blood-curdling scream from the other room, and I went in there, and what I saw, I have never forgotten it. Here is my three-year-old Kate, and she is holding on to a toy that is hers. It is rightfully hers, and she is hanging on to that for dear life. But my adorable, blonde-haired, blue-eyed grandson, who can hardly ever do any wrong, ha ha, he is smiling at her, the most sweetest, angelic, smile you've ever seen. He is smiling at her, and he is saying, thank you, thank you. And he's ripping that thing right out of her hands. And I thought to myself, Jacob, you don't use politeness as a weapon to get what you want. You have the words but your heart is completely wrong. It's, it's selfish. And he gave me that blank, blank stare, like, what are you talking about, Grammy? I'm stronger than her. I can get this thing. And I'll tell you, that whole episode, I said, give it back. You must seek her permission and cooperation. If she says yes, great. But if she says no, she has the right to say no. Right? Right? But through the years, I have seen his face. I love that young boy, and he's a wonderful young man, but I see his face as he's ripping it out of her. She's screaming, and he's saying, thank you, thank you. He's got the words, no heart, no heart. And I said to myself, I said, why is this sticking in me so strongly? And I remembered Jesus criticized the religious leaders of his time because they had all the right words, they had all the right actions, and their heart was not towards God at all. And Jesus said, you're like a whitewashed tomb filled with dead man's bones, which is pretty much the worst thing you can say to a Jew because they get unclean that way. But he was criticizing them. It was all for show, rituals, all the right actions. And then I said to myself, why does that hit me so hard? Well, because God is saying, you do the same thing, Nancy. You're a lot older than Jacob. I wonder where he learned such things, that we say the right things, and we've got the smiles, and we look so holy. Our hearts are sometimes so far from God. 
And that's me and all of you. We're so human. And I said to myself, you know, no more going through the motions. But of course, we do. But this is what Jesus said. He said, I want you to worship God in spirit and in truth. Okay? It takes time to get your head right, doesn't it? I spend time usually before I come here because my head is just filled with about clothes and shoes and jewelry and all that jazz. And I said, it takes time to enter in fully and not just outwardly, but inwardly to be able to worship God in spirit and in truth. So if it helps you, remember my grandson, the most angelic boy you've ever seen in your life at the age of five, but so, so wrong in the way he was doing things. So let's take a moment here. We're going to sing His Eye is on the Sparrow, and there it is. Will you please stand, uh, if you can, and it's one of my favorite hymns. And how many verses are we supposed to do? Three. We get to do all of them. Oh, goody. Backside to the page. There we go. <laughs>
All right, you may be seated. And it says next that we're going to engage in silent prayer. And I thought I would just say, when I was a little girl and they said silent prayer, I knew I wasn't supposed to talk, but I completely never said anything to God either. I was silent. But you need to understand silent prayer is your time to quietly, not out loud, to talk to the Lord. He's right there. Let's pray. In Jesus' name, amen. And now we're going to have a wonderful anthem, Lord, I Want to Be a Christian, from our handbells. It's a lovely day that God has given us. And let us give ourselves to him as we break bread together, as we hear from him. Do you want to hear from him? Yes. He will surely speak to our hearts. Father God, we are so grateful that you have met us in this place that we hollow because your name is holy. Father, we pray that you will speak into our lives and we know that you are aware of everything concerning our lives, every intricate detail. Lord, we bring our minds and our thoughts and our desires into the captivity of your will and we say, speak Lord, to me, for your servant hears you. Father, we pray your blessings on Bill and Denise Travis this morning. And we pray that you will continue to be their protector, provider, and healer as you are ours. Thank you, Lord, for your loving kindness. And Father, as you've taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us join together in song. The next hymn does not come from our hymn. Uh, this is a hymn that I became acquainted with uh, at the church where I used to work prior to coming to the village. It's called Come uh, Find a Quiet Center, and I dearly love the music of this hymn as well as the message. Uh, the tune is actually something you've probably never heard of before called E.B. Spring. And in the Methodist church, we sang it with three different sets of words. This is my, my favorite. You have a chance, actually, this letting me know this very far in advance, you have a chance to pick him too. Normally it's a music committee that does it, but we have an event that takes place every so often called the Hymn Sing. Yes. And we would love to have you come and believe me, we'll let you know far in advance. It's not for a while yet, but I chose chosen this for us to sing because I'm in this certain music. So <laughs> Um, Stan is your name. I love the words. Please check out the words. It's great. Here we are. God. How lovely. As we're standing, let us prepare to sing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, all of the heavenly hosts. 
Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Father God, we receive these gifts. And Lord, we pray that you will bless those who have given out of their abundance and those who have given out of their need. May it be used for the furtherance of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated.
praise the Lord. H bomb, hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Margaret and Tammy and Maestro Fish. Praise the Lord and the bell ringers. We are blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed. And all of those of you who serve in the backgrounds, we are so grateful that you are here this morning because uh, we're not there. Hello. We're not there yet. We're working our way to get there. And some glad morning we will be there or evening or whenever. It could be afternoon when the Lord comes, but we live with eternity in view. We know that we did not come into the world to stay, but that we are sojourners traveling through to the place that God has prepared for those who love him. Amen? Amen. Where love is is what we've been talking about off and on in this series. And we left off in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 13, verse 5 through 9, and we actually, um, in the scripture reading, it, verse 5 is one word, rude, in the English standard version that I'm using this morning, but it refers to love is patient, kind, love does not envy or boast, it is not arrogant, and verse 5 starts off with, or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at the wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they shall cease. As for knowledge, it shall pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. I have not arrived, neither have you. We are a work in progress. Amen. God is working on us to will and to do of what? His good pleasure. We are here to please the Lord. Our lives should magnify that we are God's children. People should be obvious and aware that we are the children of God because of the way that we live and the way that we conduct ourselves in this life that is in an upside-down fashion. Verse 5. Love is not rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. God's love for us has been patient and kind, enduring, enduring all that we go through in our trials and tribulations. Has not God been loving us and kind to us and patient with us as we struggle just to live in this world that is certainly in contrary to the will of God. Whenever you and I survey our lives daily, we don't have to think hard. We don't have to scratch our head. We don't have to look up to know that God hasn't blessed us. God has blessed us. He is blessing us even in this very moment we don't have to wonder if God loves us. God loves us. Every single person in here, regardless of where we've come from, regardless of what we're struggling with, God loves us totally and absolutely. Amen. Each day we are honored with a new opportunity to reflect Father God. Each day that God gives us, he has redeemed us by the blood of his son, Jesus Christ, and brought us into fellowship with himself. 
Father God has done that because he loves us. As a result of his son's death, burial, and resurrection, we have been reconnected with God in an intimate way. We were sealed with the spirit of promise the day that we said, Lord Jesus, come into my life. He has given us the powerful gift of free will to choose what is just and lawful in his sight. We live to do what? Please God. We live to do what? Please God. We live to please God, to be pleasing to God. When he looks upon us as his children, does he take pleasure? Does he take joy in saying, that's my daughter, that's my son? Just as a father and a mother takes joy when their children are walking according to how they've been instructed by them. Hello. God is pleased when he looks at his children and they're following him by faith and not by sight. He lovingly allows the Holy Spirit to remind us of our infraction, giving us time and grace to be transformed in spirit and mind inspiring us to be better representations of his children. He gives us time. And that time that he gives us is what I call grace. The grace of God has appeared unto all men and women. God's amazing grace. His unmerited favor. God has favored us because we are a reflection of him in this world. I hope we are, as children of God, a reflection of him. We know that many times we are influenced by the world, and we want to adopt the customs of this world, but the Bible lets us know that we are, what? A chosen generation. We are a peculiar people. Because we are in relationship with the God that created us. We recognize that God doesn't insist on us calling on him, but we are so much the better when we do call on him. We are so much better when we call on the Lord. He, as David, called on the Lord in Psalms 51, 10, and 12. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold a right and willing spirit within me. God gives us choice, freedom of choice. We can call on him. If we will, we can call on him when we have the opportunity because there are people who can't speak. There are people who are not in their right mind. There are people who have lost their identity. While we know who we are, while we know what God has done, we should be encouraged to call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm going to drop some H-bombs in this service, so just get ready. This renewed joy, this profound sense of being saved, uplifts us, fills us with hope, and encourages us to share this joy with others. The joy of the Lord is what purpose? Our strength, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And the Bible says that in his presence there is what? Fullness of joy. No one needs to leave here empty. Hello. No one needs to leave here depressed because surely if the Bible says if we gather in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the twos or threes, he is there. 
So get as much joy from the Lord today that you can because tomorrow you'll need it. The enemy is always lurking and ready to disrupt our peace and tranquility. People are meeting all over the world in, in, in France to celebrate the Olympics. He's just waiting to raise his head and disrupt things. Hello, somebody. Because he is angry that countries are coming together and supporting each other and encouraging each other and loving on each other whether they win or lose. We see a spirit of unity. We see a spirit of gratefulness. God's love within us desires and looks for ways for others to know and experience his love and prosperity by doing his will. God prospers you when you are doing his will. In our flesh, we can lose patience to the point of becoming resentful when others are worshiping God and rejoicing with God and loving God a little over the top. You know, that, that's a little over the top, Pastor. I've already said praise the Lord. And I don't normally say praise the Lord. And you've asked me to praise the Lord. And you keep on asking me to praise the Lord. That's a little over the top. As they cry out to God or express their love for the Lord, let people express their thanksgiving and praise to the God that they love, the God that they will meet, the God that they will give account of the deeds that they've done in their bodies. So while we have the use of our mind and the flexibility of our body, why should not we praise God and give him thanks for all that he has done and all that he is doing? Jeremiah 33, 3 says, Call on me and I will answer you and tell you great and hidden things that you didn't know about. Hmm. You didn't know that I was working in that situation that you just were so mad and angry about and resentful and you wanted to punch somebody out and you didn't know that I was working on your behalf. I was going to bring good out of the situation. But you were only looking at it from your eyes and from your human reasoning. You forgot that all things work together for the good of those who love God, those who are called according to his purpose, and you have been called according to my purpose. And if we know that we've been called by God's purpose, we have more reason to praise him. Hello, somebody. Numbers, verse, verse 6 it does not, love does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Our adversary is very subtle in influencing us to accept evil, wrongdoing over what is good. It started way back in the garden. Well, you know, didn't God say not to touch the tree? of the knowledge of good and evil. Yes, he did say that. Well, did you not know that you're not really going to die? You're not going to die. You're going to be just like God, knowing good and evil. Well, they didn't know evil, but evil was speaking. Because evil was jealous of the position and the relationship that Adam and Eve had with God in the garden. And he wanted to divide and conquer and destroy these people that God had created in his image and in his likeness. And he is still in pursuit of destroying our relationship with God. Setting roadblocks and smoke screens and telling us, well, God isn't, isn't concerned. Telling us that, well, nothing is never going to change in your life. 
and we listen and we bite the apple and we find ourselves in a worse predicament. Are you aware that a growing spirit is at work captivating people's minds and hearts to rejoice at wrongdoings over righteousness and truth? I remember when I was a kid, and these uh, Coke trucks and uh, these uh, delivery trucks would come in a certain area in our community, and we little hood rats would be waiting. And so when they'd open their hood up, we'd run. If it was beer, we'd run and grab a beer and run and share the spoils, and oh, man, you got it, you did it. And that spirit still exists in the world when people are doing wrong. Other people are rejoicing over the fact that, well, they can afford it. They can replace it. They really don't need it. But it was wrong. It wasn't right. Are you aware of the time and day that we're living in? Pure love is elated, thrilled, ecstatic, and overjoyed with the truth that sets every captive free. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Oh, I have a headache. I don't, I don't know why I have a headache. I just don't know why I have a headache. But, but I, I have all of these problems and I have all this trouble. I just don't know where this headache is coming from. And then somebody calls you up and says, well, are you worried about this? Yeah, well, I've been worried about that. Well, the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all of your ways, and he shall direct your path. Oh, thank you. See, that truth set that person free from the worry, from the fear, from the anxiety, and they had a release. And people are worried and frustrated and afraid of tomorrow when it's not even promised, when it doesn't belong to them. Tomorrow doesn't belong to you. Tomorrow doesn't belong to me. It belongs to the Lord. And if we are so blessed and fortunate to see tomorrow, we should rejoice. Hallelujah, somebody. Another H-bomb. If we can't rejoice concerning the things of God that are eternal, why get all tied in knots and wrapped up on things that are temporary? And we hold on to them as if they are so valued. When the Lord blesses others, can you truly rejoice and be glad about them, even if your need has yet to be fulfilled? Oh, Holy Spirit, talk to us. When God reigns and blesses on those who are what? Righteous and those who are unrighteous. It reigns on the just as well as the unjust. When God blesses others, do you thank God for it? Do you say, well, I'm glad that God is blessing them. I'm glad that God is using them. When the Lord blesses others, can you truly rejoice and be glad about it, even if your need that you so desperately want the God of your salvation to intervene in that has not been met yet? Do you rejoice with them? Love wants the best for others and refuses to taint situations against others. People may think they don't need that. They don't need that. Have you heard somebody say, well, they don't need that. They got one. They got two. 
They got three, they got this, they got that. They don't need that. Others need a blessing. Or I need it more than they do. But you don't know that God blesses them because as God is blessing them, they are taking that blessing and giving it away. Taking that blessing and giving it away, and you don't even see it. All you see is that they're being blessed and you're not being blessed. I think an H-bomb is good at this point. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 7, love bears all things, believe all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Paul has expanded the boundaries of love by reminding us that agape love bears all things. Isn't that the kind of love you want? Isn't that the kind of love you need? God has provided that kind of love in these broken, imperfect bodies to bear. And the only way that we can bear that kind of love is through the power of the Holy Spirit. Hello, somebody. We can all agree that we can bear some things, believe some things, hope some things, and endure some things. We can all agree that people quickly judge, condemn, and lose hope when things do not fit their imagination. Have you been there? If you haven't, keep living. Because you'll see God bless someone and you will think, why are they getting that? Why is he doing that? Because God can trust someone with much. To whom much is given, much is going to be required. So if you're not getting what you feel you deserve, maybe I'll leave it at that. The higher standard of love challenges us by enlarging our hearts in the power of the Holy Spirit to have the capacity for agape love. To be able to love the hell out of somebody. Did I curse? No, I said love the hell out of somebody. Because if the Spirit of God does not reside in their temple, then somebody else is residing in their temple and they're going to... You said it, I didn't. <laughs> God wants us to go to heaven. He's made preparations for us to go to heaven. He desires us to be with him. So there is a higher standard. If God is holy and he lives in a holy place... How are you and I going to get there in these bodies? And these bodies are breaking down on us moment by moment. Hello. They're reminding us that, ah, you can't do what you used to do. Huh? You think you can, but oh, you can't. So we're reminded that we are in a temporary, momentary place of decline. Then when agape comes, then our love can bear all things, believe, hope, and endure all things. Lord, in the power of your name, we will bear the infirmities of the weak as your disciples. Lord, in your name, we will believe all things concerning your will for our future. Lord, in the power of your name, we will hope eternally in your word and not the devil's lies 
and schemes. Lord, in the power of your name, we will endure all things for the sake of others, having life in your eternal presence. Love endures all things. Right now, you're exercising endurance. <laughs> Hallelujah. Those seats are very uncomfortable, but you're exercising endurance. And the more we love God, the more we can endure things that happens in our lives. First Peter 4, 8 says, Above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will overcome a multitude of sins. One day love came down and washed all my sins away with his precious blood. I'm going to stop here. I, I know that I didn't plan on stopping, but I'm going to stop here. I can't remember, I can't forget the day that I found love. It wasn't when I found Gloria. It was when I found Jesus Christ. And I got ugly. Love was beautiful, but my face was torn up and ugly and snot was running out of my nose because for that moment I was broken. But in that brokenness I was being released. I was being freed. I was being ushered into an eternal kingdom of love and grace and mercy and forgiveness and for acceptance because I had been rejected much of my life. But in that moment, in that moment of brokenness, I cried out to the Lord and I asked him, forgive me. Come into my life. And he did. And when I left that little prayer room, I walked out a changed man. Amen. And I didn't care what you thought about me. I knew that I had something greater inside of me than I had never had in my life. The Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The day that I repented of my sins, the Lord filled me with the Spirit of God and sealed me as his property. And though I struggle with this human body as you do, I am determined more than ever to live my life for the Lord Jesus Christ and to love on people who are broken, who have been rejected, who have been left behind, to let them know that God still favors them and God still loves them and he wants intimacy with them. And I leave you with this application. When God... I know where I'm at. <laughs> when God's love is fully embraced, when you fully embrace his love, when you accept the sacrifice of his son, ego has got to go out the door. It's not about pride. It's not about, well, I don't want anybody to see me crying. I don't want anybody to hear me crying out. I don't want anybody to feel that I'm better than they are. God loves us. And it is the only thing that brings balance 
into our lives is receiving his love. Let us stand. Father God, we are so grateful for your loving kindness, Lord, and your tender mercies that you extend to us moment by moment by moment. Lord, what would we do if you did not sustain us breath by breath? We don't have the capacity to sustain ourselves. Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy that endures forever. Father, we pray your blessings on your children. We pray your blessings, Lord, on those who stand in great need. We pray... For the Travis family, Lord, we ask your blessing and anointing on them. And Father, we pray for those who are dealing with heavy burdens. May they cast their care at your feet and know that you would bring them out. In Jesus' name we pray. And I pray that this has been a day that is a little clearer for you to know that God loves you, he has purpose for your life, and that you can be what God intended for you to be if you are willing. Father, we pray for Bill and Denise, Travis, thank you for your hands upon their lives and that you're leading them into a plain path in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen and amen. Maestro. Before we sing the benediction, um, you may have noticed if you've been here before that sometimes during the post food people just sort of walk away while there's music that's being presented just like our and so on. That's what happens. Right? It happens all the time. But today is kind of special because we have all these people who prepare something special. So I hope you can stick around and listen to the post food. Like, great listen. That would be really wonderful. And join with us in listening to that. Because it is the ode to joy after all. We'll get to that in just a minute, though. Here we are.